Welcome to another Practice Makes You Better series. In this particular series, I'm going to be doing documents. I normally do a 30 question mock test, break it down in simple chunks, giving you hints, tips along the way to give you the best possible chance of passing the fairy test. But in this section, as you can see, it only gives me 28 questions. So this is going to be a 28 question mock test, which means you cover every question in the document section. So it's still going to give you the best possible chance to pass your theory test. So if you struggle with your documents, legal sides, this episode is for you. So let's jump onto my iPad and let's get started. Your car requires an MOT certificate. When is it legal to drive to drive it without an MOT certificate. So the only time you can drive your car without an MOT certificate is when you're going direct to an appointment. So you haven't um, taxed your car for whatever reason, it's off the main roads onto the driveway, you now decide you need a tax. Remember you need an MOT first. So you book an appointment and you drive direct to the appointment. So that's what we're looking for. When driving to an appointment at an MLT centre, first one out, but always read the other answers just in case there's a better answer with more information. Up to seven days after the old certificate has run out, no. When driving the car with the owner's permission, no. When driving to an MLT centre to arrange appointment. That one sounds okay, but it says when you're driving to the MLT centre to arrange appointment, the appointment has to be already booked. So that's the answer. The first one is what we're looking for. When will a new car need its first MOT test? Now, with this one, when they're talking about a new car, they're not talking about new to you. They're talking about new as in registered in that particular year. So for example, you bought a car in 2023, it's registered 2023. It means you will not need an MOT until three years later, which is 2026. So let me just repeat that. When they say new, not new to you, new as in registered in that particular year. So when it's one year old, no. When it's five years old, no. When it's seven years old, no. When it's three years old, that's what we're looking for. Three years old from registered brand new. What's the legal minimum insurance cover you must have to drive on public roads? Now, if you didn't know this, the minimum legal requirement for insurance is third party. Now, a lot of people don't know what third party covers. Third party covers the damage you cause to other people's property. Okay, so if you have a crash, guard someone's garden wall, someone's car, your insurance is going to pay for their damage, not yours. That's the minimum. Because obviously, if you crash into someone, it's unfair for them to be paying for their own damage. So let me just repeat that. The minimum requirement is third party insurance. Third party insurance is your insurance paying for the damage you cause, but not to your car. So we're looking for something along those lines. Comprehensive. Comprehensive is the best insurance to have. It means you have an accident. It will cover the damage to the um, whatever you crashed into and the damage to your vehicle as well. So that's the best one to have, comprehensive. But that's not what they're asking. They're asking for the minimum, which is third party only. That's the one we want to go for. Personal injury cover, no. Third party fire and theft is the next one up from third party. So third party covers the damage you cause. Third party and fire and theft is the same thing, plus fire and theft. Someone steals your car, you're going to get your money back. Someone sets fire to your car, as long as it's not arson, you're going to get your money back on that as well. For how long is a statutory off-road notification known as sworn valid? Now, if you didn't know, uh, statutory off-road notification is what you fill in when you're not going to tax your car. So if your tax is going to run out, and you're keeping your car, you need to fill in one of these, statutory off-road notification, then get your car off the public roads, and it's going to be on private land, driveway, garage, something like that. So that's, that's what statutory off-road notification is. How long does it last for? It lasts until you tax your vehicle, sell your vehicle, or scrap your vehicle, because obviously then you don't need it any longer. So that's what we're looking for. So until the vehicle is repaired or modified, no. Until the vehicle is issued on the, is used on the road, no. Until the vehicle is taxed, sold or scrapped, yes. Until the vehicle is insured and MOT'd, no. 
when should you update your vehicle registration certificate? It's like anything, the best the best time, the, oh, the time you should update your vehicle registration certificate if you move home, it's like anything. You move house, you need to update all irrele all irrelevant authorities. So it's when you move home, house, depending on how they want to word it. So when you pass your driving test, no. When you move house, yes. When your vehicle needs an MOT, no. When you have a collision, no. What circumstances requires you to notify the driver and vehicle licensing agency, otherwise known as a DVLA? Now there's two options they can give you on this one. It's either when your health changes or change of address. That's only two reasons why you need to contact the DVLA. So let's see what option they're giving us. When your health affects your driving, yeah. They may put restrictions on your license depending on what health issues you have. But yeah, if your health changes, you need to let the DVLA know that you have health issues. When your vehicle needs an MLT certificate, no. When you have to work abroad, no. When you lend your vehicle to someone, no. A police officer asks to see your documents. You don't have them with you. How many days do you have to produce from our police station? Now, this is what they call a producer. If you don't have your documents with you, um, police will give you a producer to produce it at a police station that you nominate and you have seven days to do that. So we're looking for seven days. 14 days, no. Five days, no. Seven days, yes. And 21 days, no. What do you need before you can legally use a motor vehicle on the road? Driver's license for the particular category. If you are doing this, obviously a ferry test or watching the video, that means you're doing a ferry test, you're doing a car test. If you didn't know, you're doing a category B. So your driver's license has to cover a category B um, driving test. And that's what you're looking for, category B. But it's a driver's license is the answer to this question. And um, proof of your identity, no. Breakdown cover, no. An appropriate driving license, appropriate meaning for the car or the vehicle that you are driving. As I said, category B is what you guys will be doing if you're doing the theory test. A vehicle handbook, no. For how long is an MLT certificate normally valid? An MLT certificate, let me just explain what MLT is just in case you guys didn't know. An MLT is um, saying your car is roadworthy at the time it's being checked. So MLT is to say your car is being roadworthy. It lasts 12 months. They can word it either way. For some reason, when they word it differently, you guys get thrown. It's the same thing. 12 months or a year. 12 months is a year. So they can use 12 months or a year. So let's see what they've given us. One year after the date was issued, one year. 12 months. Three years after the date is is was issued, no. 30,000 miles, no. 10,000 miles, no. Who's legally responsible for ensuring that the vehicle registration certificate, otherwise known as the V5C document, is updated? And that's going to be the registered keeper of the vehicle. So the name that's on the V5 document, they're responsible to make sure that certificate is updated. So the vehicle manufacturer, no. The insurance company, no. The registered vehicle keeper, yes. And the licensing authority, no. Your insurer will issue you with an insurance certificate. When must you produce this document for inspection? Now, the only time you need to reproduce this legally is when you've been stopped by the police or the police ask for a law. So that's how you want to work that one out. It's law enforcement. If they ask for it, you need to show it. So when making a SORN, remember that stands for statutory off-road notification, no. When buying or selling your vehicle, no. When your vehicle is having an MRT test, no when the police officer asks for it. And remember, if you haven't got it on you, it's not a problem. They're gonna give you a producer, which you have seven days to produce it at a police station that you nominate. What must you have when you apply to renew your vehicle tax? Now to get your tax, you have to have one or two things first. A MLT certificate, that's what we discussed earlier on. So a MLT certificate says your car is roadworthy, that's first. And once your car's roadworthy, you make sure you tax your car so you can drive the car on the road. And then your vehicle tax or road fund license says your car could be on the road. So it's that order. MLT first, car's roadworthy. Insurance to say you can drive the car on the road. And then your tax says your car can be on the road legally. So we're looking for MLT or insurance to get the tax. So the vehicle chassis number, no. A valid driver license, no. The handbook, no. Valid insurance, yeah. 
because that means you're legally allowed to drive the car, so then you can tax your car to be on the road. You just passed your first practical driving test. What will you have to do if you get six penalty points on your license in the next two years? That's one of the reasons why the document section is so important because if you haven't got the right documents, it normally carries points, three points per document. You get your information wrong about your documents and legal stuff. You've got six points on your license. If you get six points in the first two years or passing your driving test, you lose it. And then you go back to square one, another theory test, another driving test. That's one of the reasons why the document section is really important for you new drivers. So let me just read that question again. You've just passed your first practical driving test. What will you have to do if you get six penalty points on your license in the next two years? That's another theory test, another driving test, and your insurance is gonna go sky high second time round because you lost the license in the first place. So retake only the theory test, no. Retake only your practical test, no. Reapply for your full license immediately, no. Retake your theory and practical test, yes. So be very careful with your documents or legal and document stuff once you've passed your driving test. Make sure it's on point. When must your vehicle have a valid insurance cover? This question is similar to the question we had previously about the tax. And this is why I say you must understand the question and understand the answer. So when they reword it slightly differently, you still fully understand what they're talking about. So remember what we said before, we've got to have MLT first, then insurance, and then you can tax your vehicle. So MLT first, insurance to say you can drive the car on the road, and tax to say your car could be on the road. So let's see what option they're giving us. Before you can sell the vehicle, no. Before you can scrap your vehicle, no. Before you can tax the vehicle, yes. And before you can make a statutory offer on notification, no. What does it mean if your insurance policy has an excess of 500 pound? Now, if this means you pay the first 500, excess means you pay the first 500. If you have an accident, you cause a thousand pound worth of damage, you pay the first 500, and then anything above that, your insurance company will kick in. So you have to pay the first 500 on cost of the cost of any claim, yes. Your vehicle is insured for a value of 500. If it's stolen, no. You'll be paid 500 if you don't claim within one year, no. The insurance company will pay the first 500 of any claim, no. What's covered by third party insurance? So I mentioned this earlier on. Third party insurance, remember it's a minimum requirement by law, covers the damage you cause to other vehicles. So damage to other vehicles, first one out. Damage to your vehicle, no. Flood damage to your vehicle, no. Fire damage to your vehicle, no. In order to supervise a learner driver, you need to have held a full driver's license for the same category of vehicle for at least three years. What other requirements must you meet? You have to be over 21. The full requirements over 21 have your driver's license held for at least three years. So that's what we're looking for. To hold an advanced driver's certificate, no. To have a car with dual controls, no. To be at least 21, yes. To be an approved driving doctor, no. Because maybe you can learn with family and friends. Who's responsible for paying the vehicle's tax? That's the registered keeper. Whose ever's name's on the V5 document or the vehicle registration document is responsible for paying the vehicle tax. The driver of the vehicle, no. The car dealer, no. The driver of the vehicle license agency, no. The registered keeper of the vehicle, they're responsible for the upkeep of the vehicle. What does third party insurance cover? Seeing the questions where it's slightly different, as we now know damage to other vehicles. So all damage and injury, no. Injury to yourself, no. Damage to other vehicles, um, yes. Damage to your vehicle, no. And again, like I said, if you understand it, when they rephrase it, reword it, whatever they do to it, you're gonna fully understand what you need to be picking. When must you contact the driver and vehicle licensing agency, otherwise known as the DVLA? Similar question that we had before, word is slightly different. Um, when your vehicle insurance is due, no. When you change your vehicle, yes, because you need to update the information. Remember, when you use your vehicle for work, no. When you get a parking ticket, no. So when you change your vehicle, it's no longer your vehicle. Remember, you need to update that information. What information is found on a vehicle registration document? Again, similar to what we've had previously, but word is slightly different. It's gonna be the registered keeper's details is what you're gonna find on the vehicle registration document. So the registered keeper's details. The date of the MLT, no. The type of insurance cover, no. The registered keeper, yes. The service history details, no. 
what's a statutory off-road notification known as sworn for short so remember a statutory off-road notification is to tell the dvla the car is not being used on the road you fill that in and take it off the main road private lands driveway your garage lock up wherever it happens to be and the clue is in the question statutory off road so your car is off the road so a notification to tell the dvla that a vehicle isn't being used on the road not being used on the road off the road there's a link information held by the insurance companies to check a vehicle is insured no information kept by the police about the owner of the vehicle no and notification to tell the dvsa that a vehicle doesn't have a current mot and again no your car needs to pass an mot test what may be invalidated if you drive a car without a current mot certificate again it's similar to the questions we've had previously just worded a little bit different a bit more wordy in this one so remember let me go back for it you need an mot to say your car is roadworthy you need insurance to say you can drive the car on the road and then you can tax your vehicle if your car is not roadworthy what's going to be invalidated is your insurance the insurance is not going to insure you for a car that's not roadworthy so we're looking for insurance the vehicle insurance first one out the vehicle service record no the vehicle tax no the vehicle registration document no it's going to be insurance if a car's not roadworthy your insurance company is not going to touch you what legal requirement must be met by a newly qualified driver um, if you're newly qualified, you have to have insurance. Remember, just in case you're learning your own car, for example, you would have learner insurance. Once you pass your test, you're no longer a learner driver. You are a driver, so you need to change your insurance over. And a lot of people don't realize that. They pass the test and still driving around because they think they're insured. You, once you pass your driving test, you're no longer a learner driver. You're a driver, so you're looking for valid insurance certificate they must be accompanied on their first motorway journey no they must have a new photograph taken for their full license no they must display green l plates you pass your test so it's not l plates it'd be p plates anyway if and you don't have to do p plates by the way and they must have valid motor insurance yeah you've got to turn it over from learning insurance to full insurance to be legal what must you check before you drive someone else's vehicle you must make sure you are insured to drive that vehicle that's what it is if you drive someone else's vehicle you must make sure you are insured to drive their vehicle. That the insurance documents are in the vehicle, no. That the vehicle is insured for your use, yes. That your own vehicle has insurance cover, no. That the vehicle owner has third party insurance cover, no. What's a cover note? A cover note is temporary insurance. This comes up a lot in the classroom. A cover note is temporary insurance. So all it is, your insurance company sends you over a cover note so you can get the car from A to B and then um, they will get the full insurance cover over to you at some point later on. But a cover note is just temporary insurance so you can drive the car from A to B. It's more when you're buying a new car for the, um, for the first time kind of thing. A document issue before you receive an MLT certificate? No. A document issue before you receive your driver's license or driving license? No. A document issued before you receive your registration document? No. A lot of documents issued here. A document issued before you receive your insurance certificate, yes. So cover note is temporary insurance until you receive your insurance certificate. When could the cost of your insurance be reduced? When your insurance can be reduced is when you do extra advanced driving or the pass plus is common. So once you pass your driving test, you can do the pass plus because it makes you a better driver. Technically, the insurance company can lower your insurance because you're less risk of having an accident because you've had extra training basically so something along those lines pass plus when you pass the driving test first time no when you don't wear glasses no when you're under 25 years old no when you complete the pass plus scheme yes what's the maximum fine for driving or riding without insurance right this used to be five thousand. if you're using the amps it's updated it's now unlimited they can charge you what they want when they want how they want so if you get caught with no insurance, they can charge you unlimited amounts. That's what we're looking for. So 500, no, unlimited, yes. 5,000, no, and 1,000, no. So there you have it. Document section is more important once you pass your driving test, to be honest, because 
obviously you need it for the theory test. Don't get me wrong. You need it to pass the theory test if it comes up. But it's really important that you understand the document side of it. Because once you pass your driving test, if you get your document stuff wrong, as you saw, it normally carries points or fines. And if you get six points or more in the first two years of passing your driving test, you're going to lose your license and then you're back to square one. Another theory test, another driving test. So hopefully you got some value from that. If you haven't already, come and join us in our community where you've got like-minded students studying, encouraging and motivating each other to pass the theory test where you can ask any questions you like, post your screenshots of the questions you are struggling with and you're going to get direct help from the community and myself included. So the link or the invite will be in the description and it will be posted as a pinned comment. Hopefully you got some benefit from this video. If you did, like, definitely comment below, give us some feedback and subscribe so YouTube can share it to a wider audience and give other people a chance to pass their theory test first time. YouTube's gonna show you a video here. I'm gonna show you a video here. Go off and watch which one's relevant to you and I should catch you in the next video.